Well, it's been a bit since we talked about Marvel, so I thought we should show up and do a wellness check on the old boy, see how things are going. Uh, well, you've got the single most anticipated streaming event on that garbage platform that uh, you're on. X-Men 97, the trailer looks great, the theme song's back, you got most of the voice actors have come back to reprise their roles. Uh, people seem to really be excited to see the direction that they take this thing, and I'm sure that Marvel in their wisdom is going to want to put something familiar on comic book shelves especially in the wake of the Krakoan era, to welcome those fans that walked away from the X-Men, see the anime series again, and want to come back and relive that excitement by picking up a comic book and seeing good, familiar X-Men stories being told again. Nope. Sorry. You lose. We're getting garbage. Welcome to From the Ashes. Uh, we got three launch titles, X-Men, Exceptional X-Men, and Uncanny X-Men, with six titles to p follow from that, Phoenix Storm, X-Factor, Nyx, X-Force, and Wolverine. So let's take a look at these wonderful new gems that Marvel's offered up, uh, starting with Uncanny X-Men by Gail Simone and Dale Marquez, and or David Marquez, I apologize. And yes, Gail Simone, you may remember Gail. She just wrote a story uh, earlier this month in the Women of Marvel book in which uh, an incel guy decided to delete all women from the Marvel Universe because, and I quote, he spent some time on the internet. So, yeah, I mean, really just just subtle, nuanced writing there, Gail. And so I really can't wait to, to see your take on characters like Wolverine and Gambit. Uh, knowing that that's kind of how you feel about male male comic book fans. Uh, so, yeah, that book's going to be a winner. According to the press, uh, that's just basically Gambit and Rogue going back to Louisiana. And for some reason, Jubilee, Wolverine, and Nightcrawler go along with them. Uh, then you got X-Men, uh, written by Jed McKay, art by Ryan Stegman. This one, I guess, is kind of more the flagship title, it seems like. Uh, Cyclops goes back to Alaska to form a new mutant institution. We got Psylocke. Uh, I don't know if that's... I'm thinking that's Betsy, not Quanin, even though she's got the katana blade, so maybe it is. I don't know. because I, I, I'm very confused by Psylocke's origin these days. Uh, we got Psylocke, Beast, Magic, and accompanying them. I think that's uh, Ao up in the corner, the Fire and Ice Girl from that kind of new class of X-Men they did a few years back. We got Magneto sitting in Xavier's chair. Everybody's least favorite character, Quentin Quire, who they just won't exit from these comic books. And Juggernaut, Kane should still be a villain because he's a stupid hero, Marco. Uh, yeah, there's that team. And then you've got Kitty Pride, who's going to be paired up with Emma Frost. And they're going to be uh, off somewhere in America mentoring some young new mutants again. Um, that one's by Eve L. Ewing and Carmen Carnero. So these don't feel like, like launch titles. These feel like storylines. Uh, like this would be a few issue event in an X in an ongoing X Men title. I mean, I where is just a good book of the core team? That's I think what fans probably would have liked to have seen. You know, X Men, Wolverine, Storm, Gene, Cyclops, Beast, Gambit, Rogue, all these guys in one book fighting classic X Men villains or just having new stories that feel like old X Men. That's something we haven't had in a really long time. You know, there's there's truth the expression, what is old will be new again. The X Men you know, their problem started before the Krakoan era. You had, they had strayed away from their concept, and then the Marvel's attempt to correct that, and that problem was to stray even further away from the concept, which, okay, that's fine if you want to try to evolve them past then. Krakoan era was interesting when it first started. The problem with a concept like that is you need really strong, really smart creators to keep that concept going, and once Hickman left the book, they just replaced him with any person they figured could write a comic, and it just didn't work. And it feels like they're doing the same thing now. I mean, you've got the the Gambit Rogue book, Cyclops' book, and then you got Kitty Pride's book. And it forces me to wonder, which Kitty Pride are we getting in this book? Is it going to be the the heart of the X-Men, Kitty Pride, you know, the one who joined the team as a kid, learned and grew on Excalibur and returned to the X-Men as a leader and kind of mentor to new young mutants? Or are we going to get the agent of S.H.I.E.L.D., Kitty Pride, you know, the one who knows her power set can be dangerous and used for dangerous means and is kind of reluctant to do so, but when approached by Nick Fury, she does what she can to say to serve her country or are we getting savage kitty pride you know the one the wannabe x-23 complete with retractable claws or are we going to get the foul mouth swashbuckling bar fighting pirate kitty pride leader of the marauders she's gay by the way 
Or are we going to get Star-Lord, the trained astronaut Kitty Pride, who also led the Guardians of the Galaxy for a bit? She's not gay, by the way. She was married to Star-Lord. Or are we going to get Ninja Kitty Pride? You know, the one who at the end of the Krakoan era was just a savage, murderous monster who racked up a body count greater than Wolverine and X-23s combined in that story arc? I mean... I know we like to point at a character like Wolverine and say, yeah, but you know what? He's been so many things. He's been Patch from Madripoor. He's been Weapon X. He's been Wolverine. He's been Days of Future Past Wolverine. But the difference is Wolverine is 400 dang years old. It makes sense that he's lived multiple lifetimes worth of experiences. And Wolverine is the kind of character who wears those the scars of those lives on his, you know, on his character, like badges of honor. These things hang with him and he draws from them. And they, he gets depth from them. And it it only adds to this whole immortal warrior thing that he goes for. Kitty Pride is 24 years old, and I think she's been married twice. I mean, let that sink in. What you have here is you have a character that has had no editorial oversight who has been allowed to be the self-insert character for multiple writers over her long tenure. And what you're left with is this jumbled up stew of a character that makes no sense, has no coherence, has no narrative flow, has no overarching story arc, no evolution that makes any sense. Her her trails just branch in every which way direction because she's been used to be everything from, again, the self-insert character to the powerful girl boss to the uh, point of view character for the for a new reader. I mean, at some point, you've got to settle down. You've got to nail this character down. Give her a story arc. And when these writers come in and they try to do these changes to this character, you need an editor who is well-versed enough in the lore of the book to be able to step in and say, no, Kitty Pride is not a vengeful ninja assassin who can kill dozens and dozens of characters and not really feel any moral or, or emotional repercussions of that. That's never been her arc. And to be honest, Kitty Pride used to have a pretty good arc. She was a, stu- a young girl who came to Xavier wanting to be cured of her mutant powers in her original appearances then she learned to be an x-man she learned even more when she left to be part of excalibur she returned to xavier's a complete character and acts as a sometimes leader and often mentor to other new mutants that's a full circle character arc and it's a really solid one and it's been absolutely muddled by all of these just hack writers who have had their hands on the character over the years so what what's my impression of these X-Men? First of all, it doesn't feel like you're giving the people what they want. People want a good, core, solid X-Men book. They want to see the team, the main characters, Wolverine, Cyclops, Beast, Gene, all the others in one place having classic X-Men adventures. That's not what these are. Any one of these launch titles feel like they could be a three or four issue story arc in an already ongoing X-Men title. And it takes all of your best characters and splits them up. And I know there's probably somebody out there thinking, well, if we have Wolverine and Gambit on one team and Psylocke and Magic and Cyclops on another team and people are fans of both of these, all these characters, they'll pick up both books so they could follow all of their wacky adventures. And maybe there is some truth to that. I don't know. I'm sure all the first issues of these are probably going to sell like gangbusters, but I think they will probably start falling off one by one. Uh, as the months carry on and and we're just treated to more of the incoherent garbage writing that we've gotten lately from X-Men. I mean, I am trying, I'm desperately trying to read the fall of the House of Powers and rise of the X-Men or whatever these rise and fall books that are the end of the Kirkoan era trying to be. It is incoherent nonsense garbage. That is all it is. Characters, I think they're dead, then they're alive, or they're alive and then they're dead. I can't tell if people can still be resurrected or not, because sometimes they are and sometimes they're not. I thought Juggernaut died in the Hellfire Gala when his got his skull collapsed by Nimrod, beating him with his own helmet, but he seems to be alive and well. But the resurrection protocols are gone. I, I don't know. It's it's a mess. It is a narrative mess. The X-Men have been nothing but a dumpster fire for a few years now. And really, if it were up to me, I would just take a blowtorch to the Krakoan era and do some kind of soft reboot on this team. I, I can imagine a few ways they could have done it that way. They chose to go this route, and I don't agree with it. It's, it's as if Marvel is just allergic to making money. I mean, they just announced that amidst all their, their cancellations that the ones that survived, you've still got Ironheart getting her series and the, the race-swapped Wonder Man getting his series. Now, Wonder Man is a character who has never succeeded to sell a comic and is not a popular Avenger. I don't know why we're spending money on this 
I can't even call him a D-list character. I don't know how far down I would put Wonder Man, but he is not a popular solo character. He's an interesting, flawed team player sometimes. That's about the best I would ever give this guy. As far as Ironheart goes, I know she's got one comic book series out there that has a bit of fan support behind it. A lot of people say, hey, read her second series. That's where she shines. Uh, what I've seen of the synops- plot synopsis and character list that's going to be in this show, they aren't going with that storyline. So, yeah, don't don't get your hopes too far up for old Ironheart to succeed. Um, seriously, if you were to tell me that Marvel is secretly being head and being led by the head of DC Comics right now in a evil, vindictive plot to tank the competition, I would absolutely believe you because they seem completely averse to any kind of success. If there's a good idea, they will steer the direct opposite. It's almost like Madam Web, just a, a, a absolute anatomy of a failure. Every single creative choice they made, they had the option. They had the option to go left or right. Right was the right answer they went left every single time it is weird it's hard to watch and as somebody who's liked marvel for a lot of years it is just really painful so uh that's gonna do it for this video let me know what you guys think are anybody out there excited for these new x-men books tell me in the comments below while you're down there do all the usual stuff hit like subscribe to the channel 